a walk through history. That's next on City Corner. I'm Steve Potter, and welcome to City Corner. Well, I'd like to welcome our guest today. She's been here before, Valerie Battle Kinzel. Welcome back. Thank you for having me. And I don't know how many times you've been on the show, but over the years, the last many years, you've been on a bunch of times because you love history. I do. And you've written several books about St. Louis and other places, too. Refresh yes. my memory. Okay, I wrote about uh, St. Charles, uh, history of postcard images, Columbia, What's with St. Louis, Volumes 1 and 2, mm -hmm. Lost St. Louis, about landmarks that are no more, and Ready to Wear, which is about the garment and footwear industry. Which was, of course, huge in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Right. I, yeah, I remember yeah. that one. Well, this new book that's just out is Main Street, St. Charles, Missouri, A Walk Through History. So why did you, why did you choose another book about St. Charles? Well, actually, I love to walk. It's great exercise, and people of all ages can do it. And also, uh, I currently live in St. Charles, have lived there for almost four decades, and have been a regular walker down on the Main Street area, North and South Main Street, and some of the surrounding neighborhoods. And it just seemed like a, a good thing to combine walking and taking a little bit of architecture and a little bit of history. Plus, and, you've lived there. Yes. So yes. it kind of feels probably intimate to you. Yes, yes. Tell me if I'm right about this. It's funny. Um, you know, I've lived in the metro area a long time, and St. Charles is just a stone's throw away, but it's one of those places like in my backyard that I don't know anything about. A lot Am of I people the only say one? that. No, a lot of people do say that. And hopefully this book will open people's eyes that there's more to it than just uh, Christmas festivals or Halloween festivals or whatever. The, there's lots going on all year. It's a place where history's been happening since 1769, and it, it is a continued continues to be a good place to go with lots of restaurants and bars and shops and yeah the main street is quite an attraction these days mm -hmm. right yes yes all you have to do is come to one of the festivals and you will see people from all over the country yeah you mentioned that in your book that it uh, i was going to ask you if, if that's right you say in your book that saint charles actually attracts uh visitors from around the world Yes, we actually have two sister cities, and um, I'm told that they're working on getting a third, but there are people from all over the world that come. It has the nickname Williamsburg of the West because it has been so accurately renovated and fixed up and the old buildings and such maintained. And what was the date you gave? 1769. So when was St. Louis? Uh, 1768. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So officially, so... Uh, what happened was the fur traders in St. Louis actually were looking to expand and they came across the Missouri River and decided to set up an outpost over there. If uh, you've ever walked the hills, there are hills in St. Charles and it was originally called Le Petit Coat, which is French for the little hills hmm. because it's a series of rises up from the river. And of course, I bet um, when we're talking 50 or more years ago, you know, now St. Charles is you just get on the highway and it's like a suburb almost. But uh, probably your, grandma, your grandparents, that was probably a day trip, right? Yes, it was. Um, and before that, it was even worse. Before there was a railroad bridge in the mid-1800s, yeah. they would take trains over to the defunct town called Brotherton in St. Louis County, over near where the Rock Road is. And they would load the individual train engines and the cars onto flat boats and then bring them across the river to Missouri, uh, St. Charles, and I'm told the process took like six hours. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, well, let's talk about your book, Main Street, St. Charles, Missouri, A Walk in History. Um, Why don't we just look at an image? Let's just start with that. Okay. And one thing I wanted to say, too, is here's what I was trying to think of. Um, it's not just a book with pictures and history, but, like, you have maps, and so you give little suggestions for many walks, short walks or longer walks, that sort of thing. Yes, yes. Uh, they are very short walks, and each map includes an image of the particular building and its location on Main Street or on one of the other s streets that's around that area. 
So you get a really good idea of what to expect. Somebody asked me, well, can you do all of them in one day? Well, sure you can, <laughs> um, but you can't really observe. You can't look around and see the details and things if you're in a rush. So what's probably the shortest walk in there and the longest? Um, the shortest is probably Frenchtown. W wasn't Frenchtown, it, I'm just pulling this out of my, wasn't that the original part? No. Okay. No, that was S South, me straight. South Main Street was the original part. It was uh, settled by Louis Blanchett near what is today about the 700 block of South Main and um, and then on to 900 block of South Main. There's a, a house there. It was not his house, but it has been built pretty soon after he settled there. And uh, it spread. There were mostly predominantly French people that came there. And then after Gottfried Duden wrote his letters, after visiting St. Charles County, he wrote letters back to Germany. And all of a sudden there was this major influx of German immigrants who came to the area. And as they came over, the population increased. The buildings, uh, they were called house buildings, they expanded up North Main Street. Hmm. Well, let's take a look at some of the images. And these will just be places you'll see along some of your walks okay. in the book. And you can kind of give us a little history and background and what they are. That looks old. It looks old, but actually it is not. That is the Lewis and Clark Boathouse. It's built down right by the river and it contains a museum with... Oh, that's the new one. Yes, mm -hmm. with many artifacts related to Lewis and Clark's famous Corps of Discovery trip. It also contains reproductions of the boats that they took going up the Missouri uh, when they left St. Charles in 1804. So it's a really cool place to go. Hmm. Yeah, did, wasn't that part of a big development within the last couple of years? I remember reading yes. a lot about it. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it's right. right along the riverfront, close to the Katy Trail, so that's on part of the walk. You can go down there, you can walk along the Katy Trail, along just by the river, and uh, look at the museum. There's also a Veterans Memorial Museum down there. All right, now who's this fella? I don't know his name personally, but as I said, the uh, St. Charles was originally founded as a fur trading village, so there were lots and lots of pelts, uh, big wilderness, lots of uh, opportunity to have pelts, and so that's how it really got established. Do you know where the name came from exactly? St. Charles. From It was f named for King Charles V, fourth, excuse me, King Charles IV, who was the King of Spain, and at that time, St. Charles flew under the flag of France, Spain, before it became part of the United States, with the Louisiana Purchase. Wow. And so it was the king and then also Charles Borromeo. Um, he was uh, a Catholic bishop in Milan, Italy. Hmm. Let's look at another image from your book, Main Street, St. Charles, Missouri, A Walk Through History. Okay, this is also in French town. This is on 2nd Street. Today, the building, sort of in the middle of the picture with the little tower, is um, a brewery and also a museum. But at the time this was taken, it was one of the major fire stations. And uh, you can tell by the rounded doorway, it was wagons and horses mm -hmm. that occupied that. Do building. the facades look that way today or would we even recognize You this? would recognize, yes, you would recognize that there's cosmetically changes that have been made, but you would still recognize these buildings. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, Palace Clothing Company. This was a, a place very popular about the middle of Main Street, and uh, it was there for decades. Many people bought school clothes or dress-up clothes, things like that there. Um, it is today a restaurant and has been this particular restaurant for a number of years. Still has the wood floors um, and the windows. The, you can sit in the windows. And, uh, it's it's a pretty cool place. Okay, I want to ask you a little something because I'm a little fuzzy. The whole Lewis and Clark thing mixes me up because I know they're connected to St. Louis, they're connected to Hartford, they're connected to St. Charles. But when we talk about Lewis and Clark and St. Charles, we're talking about the beginning of the exploration. Yes. So they must have been at a couple of different sites right in the area. Is that how it worked? Yes, getting supplies. And then St. Charles, they actually put in at St. Charles uh -huh. to go up the Missouri River. It was the Hartford where they camped out for a year before they left. They got around. 
Let's hmm. say that, yeah. Being around back then must have been a big deal. I think it was a big deal, and they needed lots of supplies. They had dozens of people that were with them. It wasn't just the two of them. Mm -hmm. Is there a memorial to Lewis, and, uh, an actual memorial to Lewis and Clark in St. Charles? There is. There's a statue in Frontier Park. Um, I believe there is a picture of it. Uh, I think you have a picture of it somewhere. But it shows them and their dog, Seaman. And he was a Newfoundland, and he went apparently on the Corps of Discovery with them. What's this? Mm -hmm. That's it. And that's in Frontier Park. Which is on the riverfront? Yes. Is that bigger than life size? I can't tell. Much bigger, yes. It's pretty impressive. So is that a new one? Um, last few years. Are there a lot of organizations in St. Charles that honor history and, and do things behind the scenes? The St. Charles Historical Society is huge. But there are also, there's like German interest groups still because there was such a strong German population. And uh, just, just different smaller areas like uh, Augusta, they have a historical society and uh, New Melly and uh, very much attuned to maintaining the past while living in the present. Mm -hmm. when, I'm just curious, with the time you spent in St. Charles, did you live in a historic old home yourself? No, I did not. So you just walked there? I walked there a whole lot. <laughs> Do you have any plans? Or are there any other areas that you're planning to write about next since you've, you know... I just turned on a manuscript for uh, Reedy Press also, and it's 100 things to do at Lake of the Ozarks before you die. Because yeah. we have a family place there and have had a place there for 40 years. Well, you, you know our friend Amanda Doyle. Yes. Who wrote 100 things to do in Missouri, I guess, or St. Louis before you die, right? Yes. Right, so th yes. there's a theme there, I see. It's a series, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. That's a good one. Yeah. Well, we need to take a break, Valerie, and uh, when we come back, we'll talk more about your book, uh, Main Street, St. Charles, Missouri, and all the interesting things you can see there on your feet. Okay. And we'll be back with that right after this. many reasons to love St. Louis, you can't pick just one. From the arts, architecture, and culture. including the Cortex Community Center. And you're never too far from great music and entertainment. So come and experience St. Louis. If you smoked, this new lung cancer screening could save your life. Visit SaveByTheScan.org. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes, and you can do it here. So what are you waiting for? Just go to the site. Operation Wonder Park is a go! There's nothing more powerful than imagination. But don't just imagine. Use STEM to change the world. Who's with me? It's gonna hurt tomorrow. If she can STEM, so can you. Find out more at She Can STEM. Garden is loved by green thumbs and non-gardening types alike because you can play. You can relax. 
And there's always something new to experience, no matter the time of day or the season. And learn about conservation in one-of-a-kind plants. So come and experience St. Louis. After you joined our family, it was like, I really do feel complete now. I'm Steve Potter, welcome back to City Corner. Uh, Main Street, St. Charles, Missouri, A Walk Through History is the name of a new book by Valerie Battle Kinzel, who joins us today. She's written uh, several books over the years on historical things in our area, and this is the, the latest one. Uh, what was the most fun about this latest work for you? Probably doing some of the research into some of the really old buildings that I've looked at for decades. And some of those buildings have literally been there for hundreds of years. And to just hear about the story of what they once were, what purpose they had served. I guess, what did you use all the local libraries and things for? The St. Charles County Archives has a huge collection of information about all the were buildings. Were there things that Doug, you'd never seen or been aware of before? Well, I've been looking at them for decades, but things, yes, I discovered things that I never knew existed. Um, Amy Hake is the chief archivist, and also I used a lot of research done by a St. Charles native named Justin Watkins. You know, there are a lot of uh, Valerie historical uh, towns around the country. What makes St. Charles different to you? What's, what's special about it? It's historic, but it's also contemporary, and they have preserved the past in a beautiful way that, like we said, people from all over the world like to come and enjoy. They have festivals, they have things that appeal to people of all ages, and they're current. And just to let people know, again, your book is interesting because it's not just about the history and things like that about St. Charles, but you have suggestions for walking trips of different lengths, so you can go there and spend a couple hours of the day, whatever you want to do. Yes. Right. Yes. Uh, well, let's look at an image from the book, and you can tell me what we're looking at. Okay, this is Kister Park. You know what? I never heard of it. You haven't? It's mm. like a little pocket park, and uh, it, it's right on Main Street, and it has a bench, and you can sit there. And, and at one time, there was a, a different building on there, but it is a very lovely, peaceful place to sit and just watch the Main Street world go by. What's the significance of Kister, that name? It was a family name back in St. Charles history. So there was a house there at one time, a home? Not a Kister home, but yeah, there was a home there. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to the next one. That's neat looking. That is the Odd Fellows Hall. And um, the Odd Fellows were a fraternal organization. This building was built, oh, 1878, I believe it is. And at that time, buildings were very ornate. And the Odd Fellows weren't the only group that occupied it. Um, there were some other different floors, had different organizations. It has been used for lawyers, it's been used for just regular office buildings, but it is one of the really premier buildings, in my opinion, on Main Street. And a woman named Penny Pittman was responsible for putting the nuts and bolts and the elbow work into fixing this place up. So just so I'm understanding this right, in your book, most of the tours are on Main Street itself, but there is some deviation, isn't there? There, we follow the St. Charles, City of St. Charles maps of North Main Street, South Main Street. And yes, there are deviations on some of the side streets. They're like little side trips. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the next one. Okay, this is a picture around the early part of the 20th century. As you can see, the horses and, and buggies and, and carriages are still there. But some of the buildings, if you take this picture and you hold it up and look at this particular block, you will definitely be able to recognize some of the buildings shown here. And uh, that's what I find is fascinating. Well, one of the things, and I'm not sure you set me straight, you know, I go to a lot of little historical towns and you can tell like a whole block is gone or something. Um, and I don't know St. Charles well enough to know if this is true or not. That's why I'm asking you. When I go down like Main Street in St. Charles, it seems like it's all still there. That can't be true. No, it's not. Uh, yes and no. When I first moved to St. Charles area and St. Louis area, there were uh, 
buildings that looked pretty sad, pretty uh, crumbly and broken glass. Uh, they were used- On Main Street? Yes, they were used car lots. Uh, my meal I bought was a hot dog out of a motor home where the um, salt and smoke is now. They have a lovely terrace, but uh, that's what it was like in 1980. And in the 70s, it was, I understand, even worse. I've talked to people who live down there for like $35 a month, no water, no heating, and uh, but it was a place to live. And uh, so it's come a very long way. It probably should be a model for other towns like that because a lot of towns try to do that and they don't succeed. And St. Charles has been... Uh, you know, ultra successful in doing it. Well, it did take a few individuals who were living down there and they saw the potential and they were willing to put in the grunt work and the elbow grease and to see that it was done. And then there was an organization called St. Charles Redevelopment Authority and they were really instrumental in getting some of the old uh, beat up places either fixed up or moved along. So let's take another uh, look at an image from your book. It's taking walking tours through St. Charles. Business owners, maybe? Yes, this was on North Main Street, and this was a young man. His last name was Amon, and he had a newspaper uh, retail establishment, newspapers and magazines. He also had books, and if you came and borrowed a book, you could pay a nickel, but then as long as you brought the book back, then you could pick out another one. And this was in the days before St. Charles actually had a public library. So this was apparently a very popular place. And this new stand, in some iteration, remained in business till the late 1980s, I think mm. it was. Yeah. Do you think St. Charles' proximity to a major metropolitan area aided its comeback because it's so close? I wonder if it had been this successful if it was an hour away. I think it did, in many respects, aid it. Uh, because the first piece of interstate highway was established right to the west of the Blanchett Bridge, mm -hmm. 1956. Up until that point, all the population had stayed around Main Street. But after that happened and the interstate expanded, people started moving south and west, and there started to be the track homes and the subdivisions. And it was at that point, the 60s, 70s, that Main Street really started fallen into disrepair. Up until that time, it was still very vibrant, but as people moved out, the emphasis was not focused on it until these individuals moved there that wanted to redo it. I may have my history mixed up, but wasn't St. Charles supposed to be the state capital at one time, or? Well, it was the state capital. It was, okay. It was the state capital from 1821 until 1826. It's right at the 200 block of South Main Street. Did they have a capital building? Well, they had a dry goods store. Uh, two brothers named Peck had dry goods stores. And so they were asked, would they be willing to take a small amount of money and let people use it as the legislature? Wow. And at that time, I, you know, 1820s, there were still people that were legislators that came in with buckskin and in all manner of dress. It was very uncivilized, if you will. But uh, yeah, for five years. And so that first state capital is now part of the park system and it has been reconstructed and redone on the inside so it looks much like it would have looked at that time in the 1820s. Wow, fascinating. I think we've got a couple of images left. Let's take a look. Uh, <laughs> this is an interesting one. Okay, this was right around the turn of the century and there uh, were something there was something called big wheels. They were bikes that had huge front tires and very small back tires. Very popular, they were very uh, used a lot by gentlemen. I've seen those images, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so women decided they wanted to be part of the, part of the recreation too. <laughs> and so somebody came up with the idea of pantaloon skirts, which were split skirts, but sort of like pants, which was very controversial at the time, and so this particular- Because it was risque? Yes, yes, <laughs> you would show your ankles while you rode this bike. But, so this retailer decided to put this up in his window, and this is the attention he attracted the day he put the pantaloon skirt up in his window. It looks like it's all men. Uh, yes, it does. <laughs> well, and I think we have one more at least. 
Okay, this is an interesting building. I love the, uh, the Rondell window up in the top. And this was built by a man who uh, made eyeglasses. And he was an optician. And then it had many uses, like all the buildings, many uses through the years. But um, I believe it's been painted a different color since this picture was taken. But uh, if you look at the buildings there, I've counted 15 different types of architecture. And while you want to watch your step, because a lot of the sidewalks and street are cobblestones, mm -hmm. look up because there's so much ornamentation, ironwork, uh, cornicing, beautiful brickwork that was done by the Germans. Well, like we said, your book's sort of a guide that you can like uh, make up a walking tour and go on. I know you have some suggestions, maybe you want to touch on them real quick. Uh, like what you should bring and uh, bring comfortable shoes for sure <laughs> and uh, do do pay attention to the sidewalks Main Street is very friendly to dogs as long as they're on a leash and as long as you clean up after your pet but a lot of the stores retailers have water dishes outside and they encourage people to bring their animals do you recommend certain days or certain times when these walks are the best to do if you want to have a little crowd, go in the morning, and it's beautiful to see the sun coming up from the east. Go in the morning. If you like crowds and being... Of course, Main Street, like after 9 p.m., would be a whole different atmosphere A these whole days. different atmosphere, but <laughs> on weekends, if you like jostling and, you know, going down sidewalks with lots of people, go then. Uh, festivals, for sure, if you like being with the crowds. Well, how do we get your events. book, Valerie? The book is available at all the local bookstores, but particularly in our area, Main Street Books, which is down on Main Street, through the St. Charles County Historical Society, through the St. Charles First State Capitol Building, uh, a little shop called April's on Main, and also through books at readypress.com. Absolutely. And you say you've got another one that you're working on. Yes. And that one was what again? 100 things to do in Lake of the Ozarks before, before you, die. you die. Have you done them all? No. <laughs> I've done most of them. Some of them I will not do. So. Well, as a one-time resident of St. Charles, as someone that's documented their history, uh, in your heart, what's, what's the best thing about St. Charles? Uh, it's attention to preserving the past and living in today and looking towards the future. Well, Valerie Battle Kinsel, we thank you so much for joining us again. I always love everything you do, and I can't wait to, to see the next one when it comes out. So it's Main Street, St. Charles, Missouri, a walk through history, and we appreciate your time, and I feel like going for a walk. Okay, yes, All come right. join me. That's what you should do at home, too. I'm Steve Potter. Thanks for sharing this time with us, and see you next time on City Corner.